Wall Street Bet and Reddit Forum, investors are taking on Wall Street. They, they, they're moving on past Wall Street and the hedge funds, and they are taking on the entire financial system as it stands today. Now, there is a lot going on that I want to cover. I want to talk about what they're doing to attack the financial system, the money system, what's going on, how they're doing it. I want to talk about how history actually shows this happening before, what we can learn from history, and of course, what we can do for ourselves to not only survive and thrive this and also to protect our wealth. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss. Now, I like to talk about the financial system. I like to talk about money because it gives us options to protect ourselves, to protect our family, and to help other people. Now, if you like these subjects and you want to help me get them to more people, just take one quick second, click on that like button. It really helps the algorithm to send it out to more people. And of course, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification if you are not already subscribed. Now, we are talking about the Wall Street bets and the Reddit forum. Um, I've covered this already in another video, as you can see up on the screen, the thumbnail, I titled it Rage Against the Financial Machine, and it's been making quite a bit of buzz. I've been tweeting about it. It's been getting a lot of traction on Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter already, you should, at number one, Mark Moss. Again, at number one, Mark Moss. But um, I absolutely love what's going on. You know. The reason why I do these videos is to help the little guy, help the little guy fight back against the system, fight back against what the Federal Reserve is doing by um, debasing our currency, fight back against what Wall Street is doing for manipulation. And so to see the little guy, to see Wall Street bets, the Reddit forum, the people use the internet to share information, to join together and fight back, to take power back is something amazing that I absolutely love. And it has changed the entire paradigm. As a matter of fact, I think this is going to have profound effects past what we know right now. I'm not, I'm not going to go super deep into this because like I said, I already covered it in a whole video. However, there's something else going on right now, something even much bigger and much deeper that I want to go into. Now, the Wall Street bets, the Reddit forums, they declared that silver was going to be next. They said that it sounds like they want to dance. The real dance starts now. Pile in. That's what they said. So they want to go after silver. They recognize that you know they were targeting um, assets that were being shorted by Wall Street hedge funds. And they've caused massive pain to those shorts, squeezing those shorts. But they realize that silver markets are one of the most shorted markets in the world. And so they want to do that. Now, just the talk of them even doing that was already having huge movements. We saw just last week, some of the silver stocks were already starting to shoot up pretty high. And then over the weekend, we saw physical silver shoot up to $30 an ounce. And it's causing massive shortages, which I'm going to explain to you how that's working. We're also seeing silver mining stocks going through the roof, a bunch of random ones, a bunch of ones in my portfolio are going way up. So I love to see that as well. Now, right now, this is only exaggerating. It's only adding to how crazy these markets are. The markets that we are in today are absolutely crazy. And, and I would say that this type of movement that we're seeing random stocks pumping, right? Last week, it was GameStop. It was AMC. Then we're seeing some of the silver miners. Now, now the physical silvers, um, they're all jumping randomly, thousand percent returns. But we're also seeing the Wall Street having to react to this. So we've seen um, the hedge funds starting to close out their positions, starting to deleverage, trying to de-risk themselves. We've seen more buying and selling than we've seen in a decade. The stock market overall was down a couple points last week. The media was starting to call that the entire market was going to fall apart. And the one thing that I'd say is that, yes, the markets are crazy, but this stuff it doesn't happen in normal markets, all right? It doesn't happen when everything is good. And obviously the eight, last eight, nine months, 10 months, things have been anything but normal, have been anything but good. And so these are the types of things that we expect to see. We're in the late stages of one of the longest bull runs in history. Now at the last stages, we get the, the most advancement, the parabolic runs, the, the melt up, if you want to call it that, but it's also the most frothy. So it moves up the fastest, but it also retreats the fastest. So we have big swings up and down, lots of volatility, and that's exactly what we're seeing. And what I would say to this is that uh, if, you're, if you've been watching my channel for any time, you know that I love history. And so I want to take you back through history to show you how this isn't new. As a matter of fact, as I always say, right, history doesn't necessarily repeat, but it rhymes. And so let me tell you just a little story. Um, and so let's jump in the time machine. We're going to jump back into the late 70s. Now I'm going to tell you a story about the original silver squeeze 
We have a silver squeeze going on, but they were not the first ones to try to squeeze the silver market. So this is about the Hunt Brothers. You might have heard about them before, but maybe you haven't heard the story told the way that I'm going to tell it. So the Hunt Brothers, Nelson, William, Lamar, they were sons of a uh, oil tycoon, a billionaire oil tycoon. And by the by the late 70s, they had grown their wealth to over five billion dollars. Now, to set the stage a little bit, and this is an important piece, I'm going to bring it back together at the end, but this is an important piece. So at the time in the 70s, things were turbulent, not unlike they are right now. As a matter of fact, they were eerily similar to what we are right now. At the time in the 1970s, we had the oil crisis going on. Not only did we have the oil crisis going on, we had stag Inflation. Now, if you don't know what stagflation is, it's something we might be going into again. And basically what it is, it's high inflation. So prices are going to the roof. At the same time, you have high unemployment. Nobody's working and you have low growth. So the, so the markets aren't growing. We have prices going up and high unemployment. If you can imagine that, it's not a good stage. And it actually sounds somewhat like we have right now. Prices are going up. A lot of people out of work. The economy is not growing. Now, when you have times like this, it leads to all types of problems, social unrest, things like that. And so that is the stage that was set in the 70s. And again, I think it's set right now. Now, the hidden enemy that we have is inflation, all right? Inflation steals our purchasing power. Now, you might have money in the bank, US dollars in the bank, and year over year over year, those US dollars, you might have the same balance. Let's say you have 10,000 in the bank, next year 10,000, next year 10,000, five years from now 10,000, 10 years from 10,000. The thing is though, is that even though while you still might have $10,000, the purchasing power of those dollars has gone down. Those dollars buy less and less and less. So that's what this hidden enemy is, inflation. It's stealing the purchasing power and, and it was doing the same thing in the 70s, right? We had high inflation. And so the Hunt brothers, they had about $5 billion. They wanted to protect their wealth. Of course, who doesn't? Even if you don't have $5 billion, you still want to protect your wealth. You should still want to protect your wealth, I should say. And so they decided that, hey, I'm not going to hold dollars that are losing value. Instead, I'm going to get out of the dollar and go into something that can retain my purchasing power. And so they decided to hedge their risk with silver. That was what they tried to do. Now, this started in about 1973. They started moving their billions out of US dollars and into silver. At the time, silver was only $3 an ounce. Now, again, they had $5 billion, which back then was a lot of money, right, adjusted for inflation. And so at the time, they bought all the physical silver that was available, right? They bought all the physical, and then they ran out. So what did they do? They moved to the futures market. Now, the futures market, typically um, typically the futures market is settled in cash. So what this means is that you're betting you're betting on the future that silver would be either higher or lower. And if you win that bet, then you would typically get paid out in cash, cash settled. But you could choose to have it physically settled, which means I don't want the cash. I want the actual silver. And that's exactly what the Hunt brothers did. They had already bought up all the physical that was available. They went to the futures market and they were taking physical delivery. So they uh, then on top of that, they used up all their cash. They had put all their whatever $5 billion in and then they started using leverage to get even more. So they were moving in heavy. And of course, what do you think happens, right? I always break this down to the most simple, supply and demand. So they had taken up all the supply. So there was no supply and there was a massive amount of demand. So of course, what happens? The prices start taking off. Of course they do, right? And this is where the squeeze began. So the Hunt brothers were driving the price up. They took all the, they took all the supply. They were pushing the demand. Of course, as the price of silver started going up, what happens? More people come into the market, right? So more people come into the market, prices go up some more, more people come into the market and on and on and on. On top of that, just like we have right now with the Wall Street bets and the, and the Reddit forum, that there's massive amounts of shorts on the price. There's always shorts, right? The hedge funds are always trying to hedge their bets. And so there's always shorts on there. And as the prices are going up, the shorts get squeezed. So a short is I'm betting the price is going to go down. But as the price goes up, I'm losing money and I'm having to cover it and cover it and cover it. It's squeezing my short. And eventually I can't maintain that short anymore and I have to close it off. And then the price can jump. And when the price jumps, it squeezes even more shorts and then they close and then the price goes up and it goes on and on and on. As a matter of fact, we saw the price of silver go up 700%. It was $6 in 1979 and it went up to $49 
by 1980. So in about a year, about a year and a half, it went from, they started buying at three, then it was six, went to $49 in 1980. And they had a 5 billion position in that. They had cornered two thirds of the market at that point. Now, didn't end that good for these guys. So let me tell you what happens next. And again, the rhymes of history. So this is probably uh, reminding you exactly what's going on. So enter the government, right? The, the government had to come in. So people weren't happy about this. People weren't happy that the Hunt brothers were cornering the market. People weren't happy that they were hoarding silver. As a matter of fact, Tiffany's jewelry company, they ran an ad in the newspaper. You can probably see it up on the screen. And they said, it is unconscionable for anyone to own seven, um, to hoard billions of dollars of bullion, to hold, to hoard it. How dare they buy up all this? How dare they, right? And of course, the government took notice and the government said, yeah, you know what? We don't like that, right? They probably got in their ear. And so what did the government do? Same thing they're probably trying to do right now as I'm recording this video. They changed the rules. They pulled the rug right out from the investors, changed the rules while they were in the middle of the game. And what they did specifically is they increased the margin requirements. As I said, the Hunt brothers and probably lots of other speculators were using leverage. We're using margin to buy silver, which is exactly what the hedge funds are doing today. They're using leverage. But what they did is they increased the margin requirements. Now, when they did that, that means that anybody that was in that silver bet at that time had to put more money in to cover that margin, to bring their level up. Now, when that happened, it brought the price of silver down. So, so um, they, a lot of the, maybe the Hunt brothers and other speculators had to sell silver to get cash to put in on the margin. But when they sold the silver, the price of silver came down which means they needed to cover more, which means they had to sell more silver, which means the price came down and it became this downward spiral. It's a leveraged downward spiral when that happens. Just like it's leverage going up, now it's leverage going down and they had to keep selling, the price dropped and on and on and on. From March 27th, 1980, um, they had a, about a $100 million call that they had to put in and they failed to make it. When they failed to make that $100 million payment, the news basically went around the world and prices dropped almost overnight. They dropped 50% all the way down to $11 an ounce. And that was about the end. Now the headline you see up on the screen says how the Hunt brothers cornered the silver market and then lost it all. But that's not actually true. So don't feel too bad for the Hunt brothers. They ended up surviving. They were able to get some bank loans and some other investors, and they were able to meet their obligations, pay off their debt. Um, they did have to do some strategic bankruptcies here and there to kind of protect some things, but they were able to keep most of their family fortune. All right. Now, as I said, history doesn't necessarily repeat, but it's definitely rhyming. So we're seeing the same thing now. We're seeing the the individuals trying to take it to the market. We're seeing them try to beat them at their own game. And of course, the government stepping in to change the rules of the game. Now, the silver market is quite a bit different today than it was back then. So a couple differences are that at the time back then, that industrial use for silver was very high. As a matter of fact, I think it was about 85, 85% at the time. And so then the, the investable amount of silver was just very low. So they were able to buy up all that um, supply and then it really put a hurting on those industrial people. Today, the investment silver is way higher. So now we're down to about 50% industrial. And what that means is that since the investable amount of silver is much higher, that means there's a lot more physical to be bought. Now there is a shortage um, that, we'll, that we'll get into in a second, uh, but there is so much more today that it's gonna be hard to do that. So what they really need to do, the Wall Street bets and the Reddit forums, if you really wanna stick it, is when you have to attack the leverage, right? That's the point. Just like they did with GameStop, just like they did with AMC, they have to attack the leverage. Now, where is the leverage? The leverage is in the paper market. So silver and gold are about the same, but they use ETFs and they use paper markets. And so a lot of people buy silver, but they don't actually own the silver. They buy it through an ETF. They own paper silver. And the paper market is leveraged. Um, nobody knows probably exactly what it is, but it's about 200 to 250 paper ounces for every one physical ounce. So imagine if all those people holding paper ounces said, hey, I wanna redeem it. I want my, <laughs> I want my actual physical silver. It's like a game of musical chairs. There's not enough silver to go around and that is where the squeeze. And so Reddit, Wall Street Bets, they need to attack the physical and that seems to be what they're doing right now. Um, over the weekend, we saw um, all the major gold and silver bullion dealers announce that they were out. They're out. 
We see um, JM Bullion, we saw Atmex, we saw SD Bullion, Money Metals. They all said that they are out. They said that they were seeing 10 times the volume, 10 times the orders in a single day that they would typically get in a week. That's how much pressure is going into the physical market, and that's the right place to attack. Now, the other thing that parallels the rhymes with history is that just like I don't believe the Hunt brothers were the ones that caused it, I don't believe that Wall Street bets and Reddit are causing this either. If you remember, in the 1970s, we had this high inflation, this stagflation period, which is not unlike what we're in today. The masses, the people, you and I, we're waking up to this. You're watching this video. You're paying attention. You know that the government is printing trillions of dollars. Another 1.9 trillion right now is going through, right? We know they're printing trillions of dollars. We know that prices are going high. We know that they tell us that there's no inflation, that CPI, they can't get it to 2%, but we know that's not true. We know that prices of everything are going up. House prices are through the roof. Stock prices are up. Gold, everything's at all-time highs. Education, healthcare. Everybody knows inflation's here. At the same time, we have people out of work. At the same time, we have no economic growth. The same situation that we had in the 1970s. And so people are waking up to this. People are focused on this. People realize that their purchasing power is being lost. And so there's already the exact same situation. And just like the Hunt brothers were the catalyst back then, I believe that Wall Street Bets and Reddit are the catalyst today. Now, the battle is going to rage on, but we need to make sure that we're protected. We want to protect our wealth in the vault. We need to put up our defenses. We want to make sure we're protecting ourselves from the enemies of sound money. They want to continue to inflate and debase the currency. They want to continue to manipulate the market so they can enrich themselves. And they want to continue to keep the little guys, the retail investors out of the market. Now, I love what's happening with Reddit and I love what's happening with Wall Street Bets, but I'm not really participating at this time. I would advise you that it is very dangerous. And when you start trying to chase things, it can become extremely dangerous for you. So do recognize that, first of all, the rule of investing is never invest more than you can afford to lose. Understand that if you're chasing these pumps, most likely by the time you get in, it's probably going to be already too late. But I know that a lot of people, I've been looking at the Reddit forums, a lot of these people are in it for the ideological um, war that it is. They are ready to take it to Wall Street no matter the cost. Just like any revolutionary, when they join the war in the beginning, the chance of them sacrificing their life is very high. And these people are willing to sacrifice not necessarily their life, but they are sacrificing their life savings to do this. So just beware, be careful what you're doing with this. Um, it's great to watch. I love it. I'm encouraged by it. At the end of the day, we have to be protecting our wealth. And that's where I'm focusing on gold, silver, Bitcoin, hard real assets that cannot be manipulated, cannot be inflated away. All right. So that's what I got for you today. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. Leave me a comment as well. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down, but leave me a comment and let me know why. All right. That's what I got for you today. To your success. I'm out.